wedding moment made you think, this marriage won't last? Story 1. I remember when my buddy Jake first started dating Emma. At first glance, she seemed like the perfect match. Smart, funny, and drop-dead gorgeous. But as the months rolled on, something began to shift. It wasn't long before Jake started confiding in me, telling me how Emma could be, well, a little rough around the edges. He didn't say much at first. Just a few comments here and there about how she'd snap at him for small things, or how she'd give him the cold shoulder for days if he did something she didn't like. I could see the toll it was taking on him, but he always brushed it off, saying it was just a rough patch and that every couple has their ups and downs. But it wasn't just a phase. The more time passed, the more distant Jake seemed. The spark in his eyes was dimming, and the once carefree guy we all knew was turning into a shadow of himself. We'd go out for beers after work, and he'd sit there nursing his drink, lost in thought. When we pressed him about what was going on, he'd just shrug and say it was nothing. But we all knew better. He was in deep, and it wasn't good. Then, a few weeks before the wedding, things really started to unravel. Jake was more withdrawn than ever, and it was like he was carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders. The rest of us groomsmen could see it plain as day, and we started to worry. We knew Emma had a mean streak, but we didn't realize just how bad it was until Jake finally opened up. He told us how she'd belittle him in front of his friends, how she'd tear him down over the smallest things, and how he felt like he was constantly walking on eggshells around her. It was like she got some twisted pleasure out of making him feel small, and it was tearing him apart. We tried to talk some sense into him, telling him that no one deserved to be treated like that, especially by the person they were supposed to marry. But Jake was in too deep, and I guess he felt like he didn't have a way out. He kept saying he loved her, that she was just going through a rough time, and that things would get better once they were married. But we all knew that wasn't true. If anything, it was only going to get worse. The night before the wedding, we had one last-ditch intervention. All of us groomsmen sat Jake down and laid it out for him. We told him straight up that he shouldn't go through with it. We said it as plainly as we could, no sugarcoating. We told him we didn't want to see him throw his life away, that he deserved better than this. It wasn't an easy conversation, but it had to be done. Jake listened, but I could see in his eyes that he was already resigned to his fate. He just nodded along, thanking us for our concern, but we all knew he wasn't going to change his mind. The wedding went off without a hitch, at least on the surface. But I could see the tension between Jake and Emma, the way she snapped at him during the photos, the forced smile on his face as they exchanged vows. It was all there if you looked close enough. And I knew deep down that it was only a matter of time before it all came crashing down. Sure enough, less than a year later, the marriage was over. Jake was a wreck by then, completely drained and broken. He admitted to us that he should have listened, that we were right all along. But by then, the damage was done. Emma had torn him down so much that he barely recognized himself. The divorce was messy, of course. Emma made sure of that. She fought for everything she could get, not out of need, but out of spite. By the time the dust settled, Jake was left with little more than the clothes on his back and a heart full of regrets. Story 2. I'll never forget the time my husband and I attended the wedding of one of his old friends, a guy I knew just enough to recognize in a crowd and make small talk with at gatherings. It was supposed to be a beautiful, traditional affair, a full Catholic ceremony with all the formalities and traditions you'd expect. But from the moment we pulled into the church parking lot, I had a feeling this was going to be a day to remember, though not for the reasons one might hope. As we got out of the car, I spotted the groom, Chris, standing near a group of his groomsmen, a beer bottle in one hand and a wobbly stance that didn't bode well for what was about to happen inside. He was already three sheets to the wind, and as we approached, I could see that he was still throwing them back like it was the last night of his life. The guy was plastered, grinning like a fool, and slurring his words as he tried to greet us. His friends were trying to rein him in, but it was clear that the booze had taken over, and Chris wasn't in any mood to stop. I thought to myself, how in the world is he going to survive a full Catholic mass like this? You know how those ceremonies go. Lots of standing, kneeling, sitting, and repeating the process until you're ready to collapse. I figured he'd topple over before the vows were even exchanged, but somehow, by some miracle, he made it through. I'm not sure if it was divine intervention or sheer dumb luck, but there he was, swaying slightly in front of the altar, his bride beside him looking like she couldn't decide whether to laugh or cry. By the time we got to the reception, things only went downhill from there. Chris wasn't about to let the party stop, and as soon as we arrived, he picked up right where he left off in the parking lot. Drinks flowed freely, and so did Chris's increasingly erratic behavior. Meanwhile, his brand new wife Sarah had disappeared. It didn't take long to figure out where she was, 
Word spread quickly that she was in the washroom crying her eyes out. I can't say I blamed her. This was supposed to be the happiest day of her life, and her husband was on a one-way ticket to Drunkville. When it came time for the first dance, things really started to unravel. I heard that Sarah had insisted they take dance lessons for a full year leading up to the wedding, and she had probably imagined a perfect, romantic moment that they could look back on for years to come. But what we got was far from perfect. Chris stumbled his way onto the dance floor, barely able to stand, let alone execute any of the moves they'd practiced. It was more like watching a toddler trying to walk for the first time than a graceful waltz. Sarah looked mortified, but she held it together as best as she could, plastering on a smile that didn't quite reach her eyes. But the real kicker came later, when it was time for Chris to remove Sarah's garter and toss it to the bachelors in the room. Now, this is usually a playful, light-hearted moment, but Chris took it to a whole new level, one that nobody was prepared for. Instead of a simple garter toss, he decided to put on a show, if you could call it that. He started stripping down right there on the dance floor, gyrating awkwardly as he peeled off layers of clothing. By the time he was down to his underwear, the room was in a state of shock. The elderly relatives were especially appalled, their faces a mix of horror and disbelief. You could hear the whispers spreading like wildfire. People were shaking their heads, murmuring about how this whole thing was a disaster. The night was a cow show, plain and simple. As my husband and I sat there watching the spectacle unfold, I leaned over to him and said, I give this marriage a year, two tops. It seemed like a safe bet at the time. No way could something this messy have a happy ending. But life has a funny way of surprising you. Against all odds, Chris and Sarah are still together, over 25 years later. Story 3. Being a wedding photographer, I've seen my fair share of beautiful moments, heartfelt vows, and tearful first dances. But I've also witnessed the other side of the coin. The red flags, the awkward exchanges, and the gut feelings that make you wonder how long the couple will actually last after the big day. You learn a lot about people when you're behind the lens, and sometimes it's hard not to cringe at what you see. Take this one couple, for instance. They were young, practically kids, and they hadn't been dating very long before they decided to tie the knot. You could tell they were still in that honeymoon phase, the kind where everything seems perfect, and you can't imagine a single thing wrong with your partner. They kept gushing about how they never fought, how their relationship was just so easy, and how their partner was perfect in every way. I've been around long enough to know that when someone starts using words like perfect to describe a person, it usually means they're not seeing the whole picture, or worse, they're willfully ignoring the flaws. The bride, with stars in her eyes, kept talking about how they got each other on a deep level. She even giggled when she mentioned that her husband-to-be had this cute nickname for her. He called her Dumb Worker. I remember my stomach doing a little flip when she said that. She brushed it off, saying it was because they were so comfortable with each other that they could joke around like that. But all I could think was, that's not a nickname. That's an insult wrapped in a joke. Sure enough, they didn't last the year. It's one of those things where you wish you could have said something. But of course, that's not your place as the photographer. You just smile and do your job, capturing the moments as they unfold, even when you have a sinking feeling about how it's all going to end. Then there was another wedding that still sticks in my mind, but for entirely different reasons. This one was all about the groom, literally. From the moment I arrived, it was clear that this guy was using his wedding as a platform to promote his band. The whole day felt more like a concert with a side of matrimony rather than a celebration of love between two people. His bandmates were his groomsmen, and the reception was basically a gig with a wedding cake. I remember one particular moment during the reception when the groom decided to serenade his new bride. Now, you'd think this would be a romantic gesture, right? Something sweet and personal. But no, this was all about him showing off his vocal chops. He chose some classic piece that really showcased his range, belting out the high notes like he was auditioning for a record deal instead of singing to the woman he'd just married. About halfway through, the bride, bless her heart, stood up and tried to join him on stage, probably thinking it would be a sweet duet. But the look on his face said it all. He was annoyed, visibly irritated that she was stepping into his spotlight. He barely acknowledged her presence, just kept on with his performance while she tried to keep up, clearly out of her depth. As I watched this unfold through my camera lens, I couldn't help but feel a pang of sympathy for her. She was trying so hard to be a part of his world, to share in his passion, but it was obvious that there wasn't room for anyone else in his little universe. The wedding day was supposed to be about the two of them, but it was painfully clear that for him, it was just another stage, 
another chance to shine. Unsurprisingly, their marriage didn't last long either. About two years, if I recall correctly. Word got around that he'd been cheating on her with the other vocalist in the band. Apparently, it wasn't enough for him to have the spotlight. He needed someone else who was just as obsessed with his music as he was. It was sad, really, because you could tell the bride had loved him. But in the end, she was just a supporting character in his story. Not the co-star she should have been. Story 4. I remember this one story pretty vividly. Probably because it involved two people I grew up with. They were high school sweethearts, the kind of couple that seemed inseparable at the time, but even back then, you could sense there was trouble brewing beneath the surface. Their relationship was intense, to say the least. They were the kind of couple who were always either completely head over heels in love or at each other's throats. No middle ground. A lot of us figured they wouldn't last, but no one expected what came next. You see, her dad didn't like the guy. He was one of those old school, strict types, and he made it pretty clear he didn't approve of the relationship. It wasn't just a matter of not liking the boyfriend. He outright forbade his daughter from seeing him. That only made things worse. They say forbidden fruit is the sweetest, and in this case, it seemed to be true. The more her dad tried to keep them apart, the closer they got, until they hatched a plan that would throw everyone for a loop. Right out of high school, just before everyone was heading off to college or starting jobs, they decided to get married in secret. It wasn't some romantic elopement in a faraway place, though. No, they went down to the local town hall, just the two of them, and got married out of pure spite. They were barely 18, with no clue about what marriage really meant or what they were getting into. But at the time, it felt like the ultimate rebellion, a way to stick it to her dad and prove they were serious about each other. When word got out, it was like a bomb had dropped. No one saw it coming. Her dad was furious, of course, but the damage was done, and there wasn't much he could do about it. I guess they thought the marriage would prove something. Maybe that their love was stronger than her father's disapproval, or that they could make it on their own without anyone's help. But the reality of it all set in pretty quickly. They moved in together, trying to play house like they were adults. But they were still kids in so many ways. While the rest of us were heading off to college, making new friends, and figuring out what we wanted to do with our lives, they were stuck trying to navigate the challenges of being married. I'd see them around during breaks and you could tell the shine had worn off pretty fast. The fights that used to be about where to go on a date or whose turn it was to pay for dinner turned into arguments about bills, jobs, and all the other responsibilities that come with being married. By the time I was a sophomore in college, I heard they were splitting up. It didn't really surprise me, but it was still a bit sad to see how things had turned out. They had jumped into something so serious for all the wrong reasons, trying to prove a point, trying to rebel against authority, and it ended just as quickly as it had begun. The divorce was messy as most are, but the fallout was even messier. They were both young, and the whole experience seemed to leave them pretty scarred. Story 5. It all started with my sister's best friend, who we'll call Sarah. Sarah had been with her fiancé, Mike, since they were kids. One of those classic high school sweetheart stories that everyone around town assumed would end in a fairy tale. But as it turns out, real life can be a lot messier than that. By the time they were in their early 20s, Sarah and Mike had decided to get married. From the outside, it looked like they had everything figured out. But beneath the surface, there was a whole lot going on that most people didn't know about. Or at least, that's what Mike thought. The truth was, Sarah had been having an affair for a while, and not just with any random guy, but with someone she was close to, a man who was older, had already been married and divorced, and even had a few kids of his own. Let's call him Tom. The affair wasn't exactly a well-kept secret. In fact, almost everyone in their circle knew about it. Everyone, that is, except Mike. Mike's friends eventually got wind of what was going on, and like any decent group of buddies, they tried to warn him. They pulled him aside, told him about Sarah and Tom, and tried to get him to see the reality of the situation. But Mike, being so deeply in love with Sarah, or maybe just terrified of losing her, couldn't believe it. When he confronted Sarah, she didn't just deny it. She flipped the whole thing around. She cried accused his friends of lying and convinced him that they were just jealous of their relationship. And heartbreakingly, Mike believed her. Sarah didn't stop there, though. In what can only be described as a twisted power move, she actually made Mike apologize to Tom for the baseless accusations. Imagine that. Apologizing to the man who was sleeping with your fiancé because you dared to believe the truth. It was a real-life nightmare. But Mike was so wrapped up in Sarah's version of reality that he went along with it probably thinking it was the only way to keep her. Then came the bachelorette party, which was supposed to be a night of fun and celebration before the wedding. 
Instead, Sarah turned it into something else entirely. After the party wrapped up, instead of going home, she took all her bridesmaids back to Tom's house. That's right. She spent the night with the man she was cheating with, just days before she was supposed to walk down the aisle. The bridesmaids were in on it too, but no one dared say anything, probably out of fear or disbelief. The wedding day came, and if you can believe it, Tom actually showed up. He was right there in the crowd, watching Sarah marry Mike, and everyone knew what was going on. The whole thing was beyond awkward. You could feel the tension in the air, like a dark cloud hanging over the entire event. People were whispering, casting sideways glances, and you could tell that everyone was just waiting for something to happen, for Mike to somehow wake up and see the disaster he was walking into. But he didn't. He went through with the wedding, smiling and holding Sarah's hand, as if everything was perfectly normal. After they got married, things didn't get any better. Sarah insisted on bringing Tom along on vacations and including him in all their social events. It was like she was daring Mike to say something, to show any sign of jealousy or suspicion, just so she could turn it around on him. She'd tell him he was being insecure, that Tom was just a good friend, her best friend, really, and that he needed to get over it. The whole thing was just cruel. Mike was in pieces, but no one could convince him to leave her. He was completely under her spell, and Sarah kept him there, gaslighting him every step of the way. As if that wasn't enough, Sarah confided in my sister that Tom had no intention of ever marrying her or having kids. He was just using her for what she could give him, and she, in turn, was using Mike to get the life she wanted. A husband, kids, the whole package. It was all just a means to an end for her. They did eventually have two kids, but the writing was on the wall from the start. After the second child was born, Sarah finally left Mike and moved in with Tom. And wouldn't you know it, they got married not long after. What's even more twisted is that Sarah and Tom are still married today, and there's a strong possibility that their second child with Mike is actually Tom's. The whole situation was a mess from start to finish, and it left Mike shattered. He eventually remarried to another woman from their high school, and by all accounts, he seems content now. But it took him years to crawl out of the wreckage that Sarah left behind. Story 6. There's a certain magic to weddings. The love, the joy, the celebration of two people starting their lives together. But then there are moments that make you wonder how things could go so wrong, so fast. One such moment came at a wedding I'll never forget, where the groom took the whole cake-smash tradition to a level that was downright horrifying. Everything started off beautifully that day. The bride was glowing, the groom looked proud, and the guests were all smiles as the couple exchanged their vows. It was one of those picture-perfect ceremonies that make you believe in fairy tales, where every detail was meticulously planned, and you could see the love in their eyes as they said, I do. But what happened at the reception would quickly shatter that idyllic image. You know how it goes. After the dinner and toasts, it's time for the newlyweds to cut the cake. It's a fun moment, usually full of laughter, a bit of playful teasing, and maybe a tiny bit of cake smeared on each other's faces. Harmless fun, right? Well, that's how it started. The bride, ever the sweetheart, cut a small piece and gently fed it to the groom, smiling as she did. She even playfully dabbed a little frosting on his chin, just enough to get a laugh from the crowd. It was all in good fun, and everyone was enjoying the moment. Then it was the groom's turn. He picked up a piece of cake, and you could see a mischievous glint in his eye. But instead of a light smear or a gentle tap, he took that piece of cake and mashed it into her face with such force that the whole room went silent. I'm talking full-on, face-grinding, with no consideration for how hard he was shoving it into her. It wasn't playful. It was aggressive. The cake and frosting got everywhere, up her nose, into her eyes, smeared down the front of her gorgeous dress and tangled in her hair. You could see the shock on her face as she tried to comprehend what had just happened. The room stayed silent for a beat, the kind of silence that makes your stomach drop because you know something just went terribly wrong. The bride's eyes welled up with tears, and you could see her trying to hold it together. She was clearly mortified, humiliated in front of all their friends and family. But it wasn't just the mess. It was the sheer lack of care or respect the groom showed in that moment. He just stood there, grinning like he'd pulled off the prank of the century, oblivious to, or worse, completely indifferent to, how upset she was. She hurried off to the bathroom, trying to salvage what she could of her ruined makeup and dress. I remember the bridesmaids rushing after her, their faces a mix of anger and concern. They were trying to comfort her, but you could tell she was beyond devastated. She had to spend the next hour getting cleaned up, having her makeup redone, and trying to compose herself. But the damage was done. This was supposed to be the happiest day of her life, and here she was, 
ugly crying in the bathroom because the man she'd just married had humiliated her in front of everyone. What really got to me, though, was the groom's reaction, or rather his lack of one. He didn't go after her, didn't apologize, didn't seem to care at all. He just continued on with the party like nothing had happened, laughing and joking with his buddies as if everything was perfectly fine. There was no remorse, no understanding of the hurt he'd caused. It was like he didn't give a damn about how she felt, and that spoke volumes about their relationship, or at least what it was turning into. The rest of the night was tense, to say the least. When the bride finally reappeared, you could tell she was still holding back tears, her eyes red and puffy despite the fresh makeup. She put on a brave face, but the spark was gone. She went through the motions, dancing, smiling for pictures, but her heart wasn't in it. And every time I glanced at the groom, I couldn't help but think about how blind he was to the damage he'd done, or how little he seemed to care. It's one of those moments that stays with you, not just because of the spectacle, but because it was a stark reminder of how quickly things can go wrong when there's a lack of respect. The cake smash tradition is supposed to be fun, a lighthearted moment that brings a bit of humor to the day. But when it's taken too far, it reveals so much more about the dynamics at play, about how one person's idea of fun can become another person's nightmare. As the night wore on, the bride tried her best to keep it together. But you could tell the joy had been sucked out of the evening. And the groom? He just kept on partying, seemingly oblivious to the hurt he'd caused. It made me wonder what the future held for them, if that moment was just a fluke or a sign of things to come. I couldn't shake the feeling that it was the latter. Story 7 I remember being invited as a last-minute plus one to a wedding in Germany, a family friend of my boyfriend's who I'd never met before. It was one of those situations where you don't really know anyone. But you're grateful for the invitation and excited to experience something new, especially since I was still fresh in the country and trying to get my bearings. Little did I know, this wedding would be an eye-opener in more ways than one. The first event was the Polterabend, which is the German equivalent of a rehearsal dinner, but with a twist. Instead of the quiet, intimate dinners I was used to back home, this one involved guests smashing ceramic and porcelain items on the ground. Now, as someone who had just arrived in Germany, this was a bit of a shock. The noise, the chaos, it was all pretty out of context and honestly a little frightening. I stood there, wide-eyed as the guests enthusiastically hurled plates and cups onto the pavement, shattering them into a thousand pieces. My boyfriend, seeing my confusion, leaned over and explained that this was all part of the tradition. The breaking of the dishes was supposed to symbolize the idea that life can be messy and difficult, and that the couple will need to work together to clean it up. It's a sort of metaphorical preparation for the challenges they might face in their marriage. Once the smashing was done, it was the bride and groom's job to sweep up the shards together, symbolizing their teamwork and unity. But that's where things started to feel a bit off. After the guests had their fun, the bride made a half-hearted gesture towards the broom, indicating to the groom that it was time to start cleaning up. He picked up the broom, swept a few shards into a pile, and then, just as quickly, lost interest. He tossed the broom aside and wandered off to chat with his friends, leaving most of the broken pieces scattered across the yard. The bride didn't seem too bothered, just shrugged, and went to join her own circle. It was one of those moments where you could feel something wasn't quite right, but it was subtle enough that you might overlook it if you weren't paying attention. Over the next three days of celebrations, I couldn't help but notice that the bride and groom didn't really interact much at all. There were no stolen glances, no private jokes, None of that newlywed glow you'd expect to see. They moved through the festivities like two people who happened to be attending the same event, but not as a couple who had just vowed to spend their lives together. The wedding itself was stunning, beautifully decorated, perfectly orchestrated, and full of happy guests. But there was this underlying sense of detachment between the couple that was hard to ignore. I remember watching them during the ceremony and the reception, waiting for some moment of connection, a smile, a touch, anything. But it never came. They seemed more invested in their respective groups of friends and family than in each other. It was as if they were there out of obligation rather than love. Maybe it was just nerves, or maybe they were simply exhausted from the whirlwind of events. But the whole thing left me with a strange feeling in the pit of my stomach. Despite all of this, I was genuinely grateful to have been invited. It was a beautiful introduction to German culture, and the Poltera Bend in particular was a fascinating tradition to witness firsthand. I was still trying to wrap my head around the fact that I was living in a new country, and being included in such a personal event made me feel more connected to my new surrounding. But even as I enjoyed the celebrations, that lingering feeling about the couple stayed with me. It wasn't all that surprising when I heard a few years later that they had divorced. 
Story 8. My husband was the best man at this one wedding, and I have to say the bride was something else. And I don't mean that in a good way. She wasn't just difficult during the wedding. She was a nightmare in everyday life, too. You could tell from the get-go that she was one of those people who thrived on making others miserable. It wasn't just a case of pre-wedding jitters or stress getting the best of her. This was who she really was, day in and day out. None of the friends could stand her, and for good reason. She had this way of sucking the joy out of any room she walked into, and she didn't seem to have any real friends of her own. It was as if she'd alienated everyone around her, and honestly, it made you wonder why the groom was going through with it. The whole thing felt off from the start, like everyone was just waiting for the other shoe to drop. The wedding day was a prime example of what we were all dealing with. During the portrait session, she was at her worst. You could see it on everyone's faces, the bridesmaids, the groomsmen, even the photographer. She was barking orders, criticizing every little thing, and making everyone miserable. It was supposed to be a happy day, but she was turning it into a marathon of suffering for anyone unfortunate enough to be in her orbit. At one point, I was standing off to the side with my husband, just watching this all unfold, and I saw the groom's expression. He looked like he was barely holding it together, plastering on a smile while his bride continued to snap at everyone around her. That's when he turned to my husband, the best man, and said something that made my heart sink. He just kind of shrugged and said, I'll just send her to therapy, and if that doesn't work, we can just get divorced. Those exact words. It was like he had already resigned himself to the fact that this marriage wasn't going to last. You could hear the defeat in his voice, like he knew he was making a mistake, but felt trapped in the momentum of the whole thing. It was one of those moments where you wish you could just grab the guy and shake some sense into him, but at the same time, you knew it wouldn't make a difference. He was going through the motions, probably because he felt like he had no other choice. What really got to me was how casually he said it, like divorce was just the inevitable conclusion to this whole mess. He wasn't even trying to hide his doubts. He was just throwing them out there, right in the middle of what should have been one of the happiest days of his life. The whole thing was so sad to witness, especially knowing that all of his friends felt the same way. No one could stand her, but no one had been able to convince him to walk away either. It was a stark reminder of how some people get caught up in relationships that are doomed from the start, but they keep going because they think they're supposed to. Maybe it was the pressure of the wedding, or the idea that he'd already come this far. But whatever the reason, it was clear he'd made peace with the idea that this marriage was more about damage control than love. In the end, it wasn't a surprise to anyone when they eventually divorced. It was like the whole thing had been a slow-motion train wreck that everyone saw coming but couldn't stop. Looking back, that offhand comment during the portraits was just the tip of the iceberg. It summed up the entire situation in one sad, resigned sentence. They were headed down a road that everyone, including the groom, knew was going to end badly. And yet there they were, going through the motions, pretending it was all going to work out somehow. Story 9. I remember attending this one wedding where things took a pretty unexpected turn. The couple had been very open about their decision to save themselves for marriage. They wore their commitment like a badge of honor, and it was clear that they were eager to finally take that step together. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a personal choice, and if it's important to them, more power to them. But looking back, it became clear that their eagerness to get physical was driving more of the relationship than anyone realized. The ceremony itself was beautiful. They were both beaming, practically glowing with anticipation as they exchanged vows. The energy was palpable, and you could tell they were counting down the minutes until they could finally be alone together. Everyone in the room could feel it, and it added this weird, unspoken tension to the whole day. There was excitement, sure, but there was also this underlying sense of something a bit off-kilter, like maybe they were in too much of a rush for reasons that went beyond just love. The reception was lively, with friends and family celebrating, dancing, and toasting the newlyweds. But then, at some point during the evening, I noticed they'd both disappeared. At first, it didn't seem like a big deal. Couples often step away for a moment to catch their breath or have a private moment amidst all the chaos. But as the minutes ticked by and they didn't return, People started to murmur, wondering where they'd gone. It turns out they had slipped away for a solid half hour, leaving their own reception to, well, bone down for the first time. Everyone had a pretty good idea of what was going on, and while some people chuckled about it, others exchanged uneasy glances. It wasn't just that they were eager to be together. That's completely understandable, especially after waiting so long. But the way they disappeared in the middle of their wedding celebration— Almost as if they couldn't wait another moment, 
hinted at something more. It seemed like the physical aspect of their relationship had become the driving force behind the marriage itself, rather than the love and commitment that should have been at the forefront. They eventually reappeared, looking a little disheveled but trying to play it off like nothing unusual had happened. The reception continued, but that strange tension lingered in the air. It was hard not to wonder if they had jumped into marriage for the wrong reason. When your relationship is built around a single goal, especially one as fleeting as physical intimacy, what happens once that goal is met? Do you still have the foundation to build a life together? Or does everything start to unravel? In their case, it turned out to be the latter. Almost a year later, word got around that they were getting divorced. It was like that initial rush had worn off, and they were left facing the reality of a relationship that didn't have much substance beyond that first night together. It's not that they didn't care for each other. It's just that they hadn't built the kind of deep, enduring connection that can carry a marriage through the ups and downs. What's interesting, though, is how their story stuck with me. It was a reminder of how important it is to look at the bigger picture in a relationship. Physical connection is important, sure, but it can't be the only thing holding a couple together. When the thrill of that first time fades, you need something stronger to keep the bond alive. Shared values, mutual respect, and a genuine love that goes beyond the physical. Story 10. I've heard some wild wedding stories over the years, but this one from a friend of mine who works as a photographer really takes the cake. She was hired to shoot a wedding on the Gold Coast in Australia, which, for those who aren't familiar, is this beautiful yet notoriously trashy place, kind of like Miami's more chaotic cousin. It's the kind of area where you'll find more Jersey Shore types than you would celebrities, a place that's known for its wild parties and not-so-classy nightlife. So when she got the gig, she knew she was in for an interesting day. But even she wasn't prepared for what went down. The morning of the wedding, my friend arrived at the hotel where the bride, groom, and their entire entourage were getting ready. Now, normally, you'd expect the bride and bridesmaids to be in one room and the groom and groomsmen in another, each group getting prepped and excited for the big day. But not at this wedding. For some reason, everyone, bride, groom, bridesmaids, and groomsmen, were all crammed into the same room, getting dressed and ready together. It was already a bit chaotic, but it only got worse from there. The groom had decided to have his bucks party, which is what they call a bachelor party in Australia, the night before the wedding. Not exactly the best idea, but hey, it's his day, right? Well, it turns out the party had been a full-on rager, and by the time my friend showed up, the groom and his groomsmen were still suffering the consequences. They were hung over as all hell, looking like they'd just crawled out of some grimy bar. And to make matters worse, they were trying to perk themselves up by snorting line after line of right there in the hotel room. My friend was trying her best to get some decent shots, but it was almost impossible. Every time she aimed her camera, there'd be a groom or groomsman in the background, casually doing lines like it was the most normal thing in the world. She couldn't get a single clean shot without some evidence of their illicit sweets making an appearance. The atmosphere in the room was getting tense, with the energy shifting from excited to downright uncomfortable. The bride, who was understandably stressed out, finally had enough. She asked them to ease up on the coke for a minute so they could at least get a few nice photos before the wedding. But instead of complying, the groom, in all his hungover, coked-up glory, snapped at her. He yelled, Shut up, unpleasant! and went right back to his lines. The room fell silent after that with everyone awkwardly looking around, not sure what to do or say. My friend said it was one of those moments where you just know everything is going to end badly. And sure enough, it did. The wedding somehow went on, but it wasn't long before the marriage fell apart. The girl who had gotten my friend the photography gig told her later that the couple divorced barely four months after the wedding. No one was surprised. You can't start a marriage on that kind of note. Screaming at your bride on the wedding day and prioritizing over your relationship isn't exactly a recipe for success. But that wasn't the only crazy wedding story my friend has seen. Another one involves a guy who had been with his girlfriend for about eight years. She'd finally had enough of waiting for him to propose and gave him an ultimatum. Either propose within a year or we're done. Under pressure, he popped the question and they went through with the wedding. But from the start, it was clear that neither of them was particularly thrilled about it. My friend was hired to shoot that wedding as well, and she noticed that in every photo she took, neither the bride nor the groom looked happy. It was like they were just going through the motions, ticking off a box rather than celebrating their love. The photos were stiff, forced, and devoid of any genuine joy. When the bride posted them on Facebook, it was even more apparent. Each picture seemed more awkward and lifeless than the last. Story 11. I couldn't help but chuckle 
when I saw this post from someone scrolling through wedding horror stories on the actual morning of their own wedding. Talk about tempting fate, right? It's like flipping through a book of airplane disasters while waiting to board your flight. Definitely not for the faint of heart. But, hey, curiosity gets the best of us sometimes, especially when we're about to take one of the biggest steps of our lives. So this person is sitting there, probably sipping coffee and trying to keep the nerves in check. And instead of reading something calming or uplifting, they're diving headfirst into all the ways a wedding can go wrong. And let's be real, weddings are infamous for their potential to go off the rails, whether it's something as small as a cake mishap or as big as a runaway groom. The fact that they were reading about these horror stories on their own wedding day just made me laugh. Maybe it was a way of preparing for anything, or maybe they were just looking for reassurance that even if things didn't go perfectly, they'd still end up with a funny story to tell. But here's the kicker. They came back later with an update, and it turns out everything went great. Well, almost everything. In true wedding fashion, there was a little hiccup. They lost their ring during the photo session. Can you imagine the panic that must have set in? The photographer probably had them moving from spot to spot, trying to capture the perfect shot. And somewhere in the shuffle, the ring just vanished. That's the kind of heart-stopping moment you hope never happens, especially not on your wedding day. But in the end, even with the lost ring, they seem to have taken it all in stride. It's clear from their update that they didn't let it ruin their day. Instead, they embraced it as just another quirky chapter in their love story. And honestly, that's what makes a marriage strong. Being able to roll with the punches, laugh off the little things that go wrong, and focus on what really matters. The fact that you're marrying the person you love. They ended their update with a lot of positivity, sending out love to everyone who had wished them well. It's heartwarming to see that even with the stress of the day, they were filled with gratitude and happiness. It's a good reminder that no matter what little mishaps happen, as long as you're surrounded by love and you're marrying your best friend, everything else is just details. Story 12. Being a wedding photographer seems like a dream job, capturing beautiful moments, sharing in the joy of couples on their big day, and creating memories that last a lifetime. But after hearing some of the stories from a photographer I know, it's clear that the job also comes with its fair share of chaos, drama, and, well, moments that make you question humanity. This photographer has seen it all in their 12 years on the job, and some of the things they've witnessed at weddings are just too wild not to share. One of the first stories that comes to mind involves a full-blown row during dinner. Picture this, the guests are seated, the meals are being served, and out of nowhere, an argument breaks out. It starts small, a few raised voices, but quickly escalates into a shouting match. The worst part? It wasn't just a couple of guests going at it, it was the bride and groom themselves. They were hurling insults back and forth across the table like they were in a boxing ring, rather than at their own wedding. The tension in the room was thick enough to cut with a knife, and the photographer, who was there to document the happiest day of their lives, was left wondering how to handle the situation. But that wasn't the only fight they've witnessed. Another wedding featured a fist fight during the first dance. You'd think this would be the moment where the couple is lost in each other's eyes, swaying to their favorite song. Instead, it turned into a brawl between two guests who, for whatever reason, couldn't keep their issues to themselves. Imagine trying to photograph a romantic moment with people throwing punches in the background. It's not exactly what you'd expect when you sign up to shoot a wedding. One of the most infamous stories this photographer has is from a late-night shoot. They were wrapping up the day, heading to the train station, when they saw something out of the corner of their eye. Down an alleyway, there was the bride, on her knees with the best man. It wasn't exactly the kind of moment you'd want captured on film, but it was certainly unforgettable. The fact that the bride was sneaking around with the best man on her wedding night pretty much spelled out the future of that marriage. And then there was the time they worked as the photographer for a wedding featured on a reality TV show. You'd think the drama would be kept in check with cameras rolling, but no such luck. By the end of the night, the groom approached the photographer and one of the producers with a look of panic on his face. He confessed, I think I've made a big mistake. They tried to reassure him, telling him it was natural to have doubts after such a big decision, but then he clarified, no, I mean, I think I'm. The fallout from that revelation was explosive, and the drama that unfolded over the next week on Facebook was nothing short of mesmerizing. The whole thing played out like a soap opera, with friends and family chiming in, and the newlyweds, if you could still call them that, dealing with the aftermath of the groom's confession. Another particularly shocking moment came courtesy of a video guy who had the bride and groom mic'd up for the ceremony. During a lull in the day, the video guy called the photographer over and said, 
Listen to this. They played back the groom's conversation with one of the bridesmaids, where he admitted they had to end their affair now that he was married. Talk about a bombshell. It's the kind of secret that would blow any marriage out of the water, and to catch it on tape, that's a whole new level of awkward. But it's not all affairs and fights. Sometimes the chaos is just pure, unfortunate accident. Like the time they were shooting a wedding in an old church on the hottest day of the year. The groom was standing at the altar waiting for his bride and started swaying back and forth, clearly struggling with the heat. Next thing anyone knew, he fainted, fell forward, and slammed his mouth into a stone step, smashing his front teeth out. Blood was everywhere, and instead of a joyous wedding day, the bride and groom were headed to the emergency room. Another incident involved a bride and groom who thought it would be fun to take some photos on a trampoline. What could go wrong, right? As the groom came down, the bride was bouncing up, and he landed on her dress just as she was in midair. The dress was yanked down, and the bride, well, she popped out of the top. It was a wardrobe malfunction of epic proportions, with the bride's assets flailing in the air for all to see. Story 13. I'll never forget that moment at my own wedding when things took a bit of an unexpected turn. You know how weddings are supposed to be these seamless, joyful events where everything goes according to plan? Well, mine had one of those heart-stopping moments that sticks with you, even years later. We were standing there at the altar in front of all our friends and family, holding hands, and everything was going smoothly. The woman officiating was going through the usual vows, and we were both smiling, caught up in the emotion of the day. Then came the big question, the one where you're supposed to say yes without hesitation, sealing the deal in front of everyone. But when she got to my bride, there was this pause. It wasn't just a brief moment to catch her breath or a quick smile before she answered. No, this was a full-on noticeable pause. It was like time slowed down for that second, and suddenly, all the air was sucked out of the room. You could feel everyone holding their breath, waiting to see what would happen next. The woman officiating noticed it too, and in an attempt to lighten the mood, she kind of chuckled and said, Oh, oh, she's thinking about it. That nervous laughter spread through the crowd, and even I tried to play it off, thinking it was just a moment of nerves. My bride laughed too, eventually said yes, and we moved on with the ceremony. The rest of the day was beautiful, filled with dancing, toasts, and all the usual celebration. But that pause, it stuck with me. At the time, I chalked it up to wedding day jitters, the kind of thing that could happen to anyone when they're about to make such a huge commitment. And honestly, the day was so busy and filled with well wishes that it was easy to push that moment to the back of my mind. After all, we were married now, and that was supposed to be the beginning of our happily ever after. For a while, it was. We had a good few years together, almost four to be exact. But looking back, I can see now that the seeds of doubt were probably there from the start. Marriage is hard, and it takes more than just love to make it work. You have to be all in, both of you, without hesitation. That pause at the altar, which I had tried so hard to forget, might have been the first sign that things weren't as solid as I wanted them to be. Over time, those little doubts, those unspoken uncertainties, started to creep into our marriage. We had our share of good times, but there was always this underlying tension, like something was slightly off kilter. We both tried to make it work, but as the years went on, it became clear that something was missing. That connection we had when we first started dating, the excitement and the certainty, had started to fade. We drifted apart, slowly at first, until it became obvious that we were no longer on the same page. Eventually, we had to face the truth that our marriage wasn't what either of us had hoped it would be. We made the tough decision to part ways, and while it was painful, it was also a relief in some ways. That pause at the altar, that moment of hesitation, had been a warning sign that neither of us fully understood at the time. It took almost four years for us to realize that maybe we hadn't been as ready as we thought we were.